Chapter 17 Branching in Git Before we dive into branching in Git, which is where things become really interesting, let's do a quick recap of the most important things we have learned so far. We know that git init is how we initialize an empty repository. We know that git add is how we copy files from our file system to the staging area, which is where git prepares them so they are ready to be committed. We know that git commit is how we take everything that's currently in the staging area and add it to the DAG. We also know that git uses the head label to keep track of where we are and there's also a label for each branch. Alright, so far so good. Now let's see how we can use what we've learned to understand what git does when we start creating additional branches. Note that we already have a branch. Everything needs to be on some branch, so git starts us off with a default branch which is called main. On this default branch, we have made two commits so far. Before we look at how we can create a new branch, we should probably pause for a moment to make sure we understand why you would want to make a branch in the first place. Remember in chapter 2, where we were talking about why we need version control systems, specifically this list of files git draft.md, git draft 02md git 03md git 03 underscore comments by search.md, git dash good.md, git dash good underscore final.md. If we were to manage this in git instead, the first couple of drafts would probably just be additional commits on the same branch. But then there's this file with the underscore comments by search suffix, which probably means that this was a colleague making changes to the file. Well, this would be a good candidate to go on a different branch, because branches in Git are all about isolating your work. If you are working on your own on something that has a relatively linear progression from initial ID to final outcome, you may only need a single branch. But if you're working on things that progress at different speeds or need to be kept apart, you will find that branches are going to be a lifesaver. As a practical example, imagine that you are maintaining a website. The production code, the one that is deployed on the web server, is in the main branch. Last week, you started to work on a new feature. The website will now also have a dark mode. However, you were smart, so rather than do this in the main branch, you've created a so-called feature branch for this. Let's say you've named it dark-mode. Now your boss comes in and points out a small typo on the homepage. It's not a big deal, but your boss is a bit of a grammar Nazi, so they want you to drop what you're doing and fix it now. If you had been doing your dark mode work on the main branch, you would be in a real pickle right now, because you would have mixed your new dark mode work with the production code, and so fixing the typo would have had to wait until you were ready with that, or you'd have to somehow undo the work you did so far, or at least find a way to disentangle those changes from what was there before. Don't let this happen to you. Embrace branching in Git. Branches are not hard to understand and we'll show you exactly how to make them in the next chapter.